I'm Michael Killen, and a few weeks ago, my two granddaughters, who are students in the Melo Park Elementary School, came over the house, and I said to them, what have you been doing in school? And their eyes and face lit up as they started to tell me they were part of a debating program in the elementary schools. And that, is, that surprised me, that children would find something really super interesting. And I decided to find out more about the program. The young ladies told me that a fellow named Coach Briar Buckhalter ran the program for the schools, and I decided to invite him on this program to get an understanding of the value of this program to the community of Menlo Park. But before I start asking him questions, and as well as the young ladies, I want to make two announcements. On June 19th, Stanford University is presenting their Energy Summit 2014 in the Arriaga Alumni Conference Center. I go there every year. It is truly a very informative day. And I also want to mention that in the lobby of the Arriaga, the uh, Precourt Energy Efficiency Center will present my new painting. It's a 15-foot painting called Don Quixote Meets Climate Change. And that is part of the painting. It's a small snippet of the 15-foot painting. I think we have another photo of it. And that is climate change. I thought it's important to put a face on that important development. Also, I want to make another announcement. On June 22nd, the Media Center, which is where we are filming this show today, is putting on an event called Art, Politics, and Science Meet Climate Change. Congresswoman Anna Eshoo will handle the politics. Chris Field, who is a co-chairman of the important IPCC organization. That is the premier scientific organization in the world. They are part of the UN. He will report on the status of climate change. I will do the art. And for that program, which will be open to the public, we will have on this stage my new 15-foot painting, Don Quixote Meets Climate Change. Now. I'd like to say, Coach Breyer, nice it is to wonderful to have you here. Thank you very much. And I, I want to mention that after my two granddaughters, who I'll introduce in a little while, told me about your event, I went over on Sunday to Oak Knoll Elementary School in Menlo Park to try to get a feel for what was happening, because I was so impressed. But could you tell us what was happening on Sunday with your debating program? Absolutely. So this Sunday was our uh, kind of a culmination of what we've been working on all year long. We hosted a, a speech and debate tournament for elementary school kids. And so it was open to all the students who've been participating in the speech and debate program in Menlo Park at schools from uh, Ensenal, Laurel, and Oak Knoll. And they came and uh, competed in a day-long event on one day and then a finals for the following day, which starts about 8.30 in the morning and goes all the way until 5 p.m. in the evening. And it's uh, very rigorous, quite intense, challenging, and uh, often the kids find quite a bit fun competition. These were third grade, starting with third graders? Starting with as young as third grade. We even had one uh, second grader who did attend from Ensenal Elementary as wow. well. Wow. I'm going to comment on some things I observed that day. But first, sure. I, I want to say you said working all year mm -hmm. on this. When you say working all year, what is, are you teaching every single day during the week? I, I teach uh, with Menlo Park on Monday through Thursday. And I do work with a number of other schools throughout the uh, peninsula all the way through to San Jose and the South Bay. And, um, but with Menlo Park, I teach there uh, Monday through Thursday. And usually my programs start from around um, eight o'clock or so in the morning and they tend to go through till I've worked with every single third grade class in the district. Oh, really? Yes. And um, 
when you work with these students, what is your goal? Well, a lot of people start out and they, they really love their field, and I'm no exception to that. I really believe that speech and debate is incredibly empowering for kids. I think that's my number one thing. But when I start at the beginning of the year, I have a little talk with the kids. And I find out a little bit about them to develop a rapport and get to know them. And I tell them I'm going to tell them something about myself. And the first thing I say is, I come in here and you think I'm a speech and debate instructor. And I tell them that I've taught a number of other things. I've taught from martial arts to chess to uh, etiquette and ballroom dancing. And I tell them there's a reason why I do this, and that's because I have a secret mission for you. And I hope you're going to one day change the world. And not uh, let the kids know it's unlikely you'll be a professional debater as a job. You might be a doctor, a lawyer, an artist, or any other field that you might dream. But I hope that from my working with them, I'll help be a tiny impact on their life that will help them become more powerful in what they do to change so, the world. To change the world. Change you the world. present my that goal. idea to third graders. Absolutely. How old are third graders, by the way? You know, they, um, usually they're around 8, 9, 10 years old, so somewhere in that range. And how do they react to the thought that they are doing something that might empower them to change the world. How do they react to that? I think a lot of people assume that kids think in a, in a small and narrow way, but just, just to look at what kids like to play and imagine. You know, they usually don't play something small. They play superhero that's changing the world, or they fantasize about being a famous star or actor or the president or an astronaut. Um, I think, if anything, it's harder for adults to imagine changing the world than kids. As we grow, we tend to become a little more embittered and cynical around the world, but for someone who's young in third grade, the whole world is full of possibilities. They have their whole life ahead. OK. And if you're going to have them debate certain issues, sure. do you present, do you have a list of issues that you present to the students? And if so, could you name a few of them? Sure. Um, when you're doing debate, typically what you do is you try and stay relevant in what's going on in the real world. And a lot of times, uh, I've told parents some of the topics, and they go, there's no way a, a third grader can even conceivably have a, a decent discussion about this. So right now in California, as you probably know, we're dealing with a severe drought. So kids have talked about, for example, should wasting water be punishable by jail time? Might be a sample topic we talk about. Or just today in class, we were talking about uh, should watering a lawn be illegal? And students in debate are forced into a side. They have to learn to defend a position and to understand and dive into it. And so one side will be enacting as the government team, as we call it, which means they're defending it. And the other side will be called the opposition, which means they're attacking that idea, basically. And so uh, we've talked about everything from watering lawns to should kids wear student uniforms to um, Halloween being wasteful as a holiday to at the last debate topic, we just have some very philosophical ideas like uh, are people more greedy or generous? OK. I'd like to bring our two young ladies into Great. the picture. First of all, I'd like to introduce them. Over here is Isabella and Sophia. And I knew when I met you, you knew who they were. And, and you work with how many children during the week? On any given week, I work from somewhere between, I'd say, 500 to 800 kids. And I was wondering, maybe you'd like to ask them, how did it resonate? How did they react when? you presented the idea that you they're going to debate issues that would help them prepare themselves to improve the world and, and maybe you'd like to take over with them and and uh engage them and sure uh, well, go ahead take sure so girls i'm sure you're excited to be on here so uh what would you got what did you two think when you first started this year and you heard all this stuff what did it make you think when you heard you're going to be learning to change the world and all this sort of stuff I thought it was pretty cool because, like, I didn't really know what debate was at first, but I really liked it, and it's really cool to think that I could change the world. How about for you? I don't know. I sort of, like, I thought it was really cool that, like, anybody can change the world, like, no matter what they're like or who they are. So I, I sort of want to change the world. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how did you feel... When you first started the class, it's kind of different because, you know, I came in and I worked with you guys just once a week for about an hour. How did it feel uh, having a different teacher who wasn't your normal teacher coming in there every week? What was it like? Like, I really enjoyed it, and it was really fun to have you as a teacher, and I really looked Thanks. forward to Tuesday. Yeah, it was for, that fun. To have it. 
Um, I don't know. I really liked it because sometimes it's like fun to have another teacher. Kind of a change of pace, yeah. Uh, one thing I, I noticed with working with you guys is how much kids seem to really be excited to have somebody a little different. Kind of that change can make a big difference, just like you guys learned. Yeah. Uh, so what did you two like about debate? What was fun about the class? You guys have been doing it almost all year, so what did you think? Well, I really liked the classes, and I really had fun at the Ensignal Debate Tournament that I went to. And it's kind of, I know how to um, like win arguments better now, so that's always yeah. helpful. How have you been using that? Um, well, like sometimes with my parents or my friends or really anything. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful. Yeah. Huh? I'm sure your parents like that. How about for you? Um, I I really liked debate because, like, I enjoyed it and like I was learning how to do pers persuasive writing, <laughs> and I feel like debate was sort of a like to that, so it sort of helped me, um, in writing. Oh, that's interesting. No, so. How did, um, since this is your first time learning debate for both of you, how did it affect your, the rest of your studies and all your other subjects? Well, like writing, as she was saying, it really helped with the argumentative writing or persuasive writing. That probably was the subject that it affected most. Were there any other subjects that affected for you too? Um, I don't really know. <laughs> it's kind of hard to say, huh? How about um, outside of regular classes? Did it change at all how you dealt with friends or family or anything? Yeah. Yeah. Like I was saying, it really, I know a lot better how to like win arguments and actually like everything about today, it really helps in like a normal, like everyday life. So for any kids that don't know, um, what is an argument to a debater? Why, what's different on an argument to a debater to like just other kids you might run into at school? Oh, uh, like, well you think more of like the government side and the opposition side and you really think more about what it is and you really have to come up with reasons and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I feel like um, it made me like, like it made me think like more like about everyday stuff. Like it made me think about, you know, going to school. I, I was like thinking about it a lot during debate like during a lot of stuff. And what, um, for kids who have never tried debate before, what would you say to a kid who feels nervous about debate or is excited or either way, what would you tell them for the first time if you're meeting a kid who is trying debate? Uh, well, first of all, I'd tell them how really fun and awesome it is, and I'd also explain the basic stuff, like what you need, like you need a topic, uh, two sides, and a lot of other stuff. What are some of the other things you remember that you need besides a topic and two sides? Um, Do you two remember any other things? Like, um, I remember that there was on case and off case. And you need judges and, let's see. A lot of other things. Yeah, yeah. I, I think one of the biggest things, uh, tell, me, tell me what you girls, if you'd agree with this. I think a lot of times kids think when they first do debate that you're going to be fighting with the other side and trying to get them to agree with you. And I think one of the big things uh, you girls might have liked and the other kids might have been surprised by, and I remember on our first few classes were, is that you're not trying to convince the other side, you're trying to convince a judge. Yeah. And um, do you actually talk directly with the other side during a debate round? Uh, not exactly. Like, no. you, you can, like, when you're doing a PLI, um, which is when you're telling them like why you think that they're wrong or you're bringing back another thing that they said earlier. Yeah, and for those that don't know, there's some people that haven't heard a debate, uh, a POI stands for a point of information. And it's one of the few times in a debate round where you actually get to directly talk to the other side and ask them a question. The rest of the time, you're actually more appealing to a judge as if it were a, much like a presidential debate you're trying to convince the audience and the general population of America. In a, in a debate like they're doing in elementary school, they'll have a panel of adults that are watching, and they're trying to convince them that they're correct in their ideas and their beliefs. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Well, first, let me just ask, Isabella, what grade are you in? Third. Say it again? Third. And how old are you? Nine. Nine. You've done very nicely. Sophia? I'm in fifth grade, and I'm 11 and a half. Okay. Both of them were saying some of the elements 
or the structure for thinking about debating. But could you present them to us? Sure. So a debate round, the first thing you're going to need to start, and the girls said this very well, is you're always going to have two sides. And we want to make sure that people are very clear about which side they're on and what they're articulating. Um, the second thing we want to hold the kids to, and this is very tough, especially when they start out to, to get this idea across, is that you're really going to stick to a topic. I mean, just look at modern American politics. doesn't matter what, what side you like. You watch the presidential debates, and they hardly ever actually answer a question or focus. Whereas in debate, we really have to stick to that topic. And that's the second initial element they find out. They find out, of course, there's a judge. So you're not fighting with the other side. You're trying to present solid, logical arguments. So when we say an argument in debate, it's really just something we believe is true or we don't believe is true. It's not so much that we're actually fighting with somebody else. And then um, we're also going to need to have a disagreement. In debate, it doesn't work well if we don't have a disagreement. And that's why we need those two sides that we separate them into. And so uh, a lot of people have uh, all sorts of conce concepts of what debate actually is. And so in this age, what it, we teach is a style called parliamentary debate. And it's a two-on-two -two type of debate, which I modify a little bit for the younger age groups. And each side's going to get a topic. Like, for example, uh, the United States should send a manned mission to Mars in the next 10 years. Each side will be the government team will have to agree with that. And they're pre-assigned this. They get no choice in this. The opposition team will have to find some flaw. They don't necessarily have to disagree with the idea, but they have to find some flaw in what the government is saying. And then they present their arguments. And they, it's very structured. Only one person speaks at a time. They take turns. The first speaker for the government we call the prime minister. Second speaker we call the member of government. First speaker for the opposition we call the leader of opposition. Second we call the member of opposition. And they speak for about five minutes each. And one of the things that's really special about this forum debate, why I really love it for the kids, is some other forms of debate are very scripted, and that you actually research it very much in advance ahead of time. And you can prepare specialized knowledge on the subject, which is a great skill, no doubt. With this forum of debate, when they get a topic, they have anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to present a 30-minute debate round. So they have to think from the cuff. They have to think off the top of their head. And just the development of critical thinking and reasoning is amazing that happens when these kids learn to think like this. Fast, dynamic, intense, and even for an adult, you know, imagine having 20 minutes to prepare a 30 minute speech, it's, it's challenging. So do you think the primary benefit, or what are the other benefits besides helping them develop their critical thinking? H have you identified, we, these young ladies have presented sure. a lot, but maybe you would also present it right now. What are the big benefits to the, Absolutely. To the kids? I'd say one of the, uh, there's several different areas, and that's actually why I love speech and debate. It taps into so many things. It develops, it really helps you with your presentation, verbal and delivery. Um, you learn how to get up there and speak in a very positive, proactive way. Um, it also helps your critical thinking in terms of, I know I've mentioned this, but looking at an idea and actually saying not just you're wrong, but why are you wrong? For the first time, you have to really think about why do I believe this? How do I know it's true? And if I don't believe you, beyond just saying you're wrong, why are you wrong? Why do I actually think that? Uh, it develops amazing note-taking skills. All the way into third grade with these young girls, they do what's called flowing a debate round. And that means they take very detailed notes on not just what their partner said, but also what the opponents say so that they can counter them. And um, it also, when they get more into this stage, I start to feel engaged in the world. And that's what I really love about it, is the idea of self-empowerment. You know, a lot of times in school, we're, we're really focused on acquiring new information and skills. And this is a chance to take all that information they've worked so hard on in their schools and take it and apply it in this rigorous academic challenge and see what we do with that knowledge we've attained. So it's something to do with really developing the person. Very much so. Instead of just bringing in knowledge and storing it away somewhere, it's getting them to use knowledge and developing new powerful skills that can help them. Now, on Sunday, when I went to Oak Knoll School, I was surprised that in this large gym gymnasium, and also had a, uh, it was an auditorium with a stage, mm -hmm. and there was a great number, maybe 50 youngsters, all sitting down, looking up at the stage, all anxious for the event to begin. I have never seen such enthusiasm <laughs> about something that's academic, uh, growth-oriented. And 
What do you think is the key that you use to help uh, create that enthusiasm? And maybe the young ladies have, have want to chime in on uh, what they see makes them and the other students so enthused about this program. Sure. Why, why don't I let them answer okay. first, then I'll chime in on what I try and do. Uh, well, I guess it's just like really fun to be able to like, you feel like really important and it's really fun to be able to debate and it's like an all day thing. And it's really fun to be able to prepare, like you're on your own your whole day, so that's fun. And it's just really exciting. I don't, yeah. Uh, I think it's like, really fun because like you get to learn new stuff in like a really fun way and you like you can't forget it it's like something that you really like like and like you don't I don't know yeah I I think what I try and do with the kids is I really believe in the art of teaching I think a lot of times people focus very much on the content and core and curriculum and I had a wonderful mentor who taught me how to teach. It was actually in martial arts when I was very young. And um, I had two wonderful mentors there. And later on when I went to college, I had another amazing mentor. And he used to tell the story that the best class he ever took was underwater basket weaving. And he said he will never weave a basket after that, never use it. But it's the way the information is presented. And I think the first thing I try and do is create a safe space for kids to explore. And that exploration is why people have a passion, whether it be politics, engineering, science, art, music. Human beings in their soul love to explore and, and develop. And I think that's uh, the first component, is creating a safe space to do that. And then it's presenting them with the realities of what's out there in the world. Kids love to be treated like adults. adults yes. Yeah, yeah, and that's one of the things the girls were mentioning is, at the start of the year, I, I give the kids a very important speech where I give them a gift. And that's that for my class, they are no longer children. For the rest of the class, they get to get, get treated like adults. But wow. if they break that or abuse that privilege, it's given one time. And I'm amazed at how much these kids live up to that standard. Yeah. I was also very impressed with the support that, of the adults that is around you. For example, at that elementary school, the principal, Kristen Gracia, yes. Gracias, uh, gave a presentation to the students, very similar to your presentation. And she said, I know all of you are hoping to win a medal, a trophy. And then she said, not everyone is going to win. And you're going to be disappointed. I mean, we all get disappointed in life. And it's OK to be disappointed. But in a way, every one of you is a winner. Because if you got engaged in this program, and if you got an excited and if you learned and you really want to change the world you are a winner and that is very much the message you gave to the students as well absolutely I I always tell the kids a story that back when I was competing and I was younger my instructor used to always tell me you know you can go somewhere and be the best person there and win and walk away and if it haven't hasn't changed you in any way it hasn't enriched your life you walk away with a trophy to commemorate that, that you happen to be the best person that day. But if you go and you lose every, I tell the kids this too, as they've heard, you go and you lose every round, but you learn from what you did, and you grow, and you change as a person, that's what's going to make you stronger and make a difference. Um, a lot of days, there's a new word that's very vogue in education, which is grit. It's grit? Grit, yeah, to give kids the idea of perseverance and tenacity, because life isn't easy. And the bigger your goals are to change this world, the harder it will be. There'll always be some force resisting that. And so at this young age, I want these kids to start to develop this idea of, I have the internal strength and power that through adversity, through challenges, I can succeed. To, today I was in a class where there was a girl who went to the previous tournaments that both of these two went to. And unlike these girls who did win lots of rounds, they didn't win a single round. And afterwards they came and told me it was wonderful and they look forward to going again, maybe winning one. And this last tournament, they had three wins for the first time. And they were ecstatic and happy. And they said they'll go back again and keep trying to improve. And that's, that's what I really love to see about these kids, is they love the field, the camaraderie. I mean, girls, after the debate round, what happens when you leave? Like, do you fight with your opponents or storm off? Or how does it usually, what usually happens? Oh, no, you probably, I normally say thank you. And it was how fun it was. And 
Well, you're really tired too because it was a lot of work, but yeah. How about I, for you? I usually, I feel happy when it's done because I feel like I've sort of accomplished something. And does it matter if you won or lose? Did it change how you dealt with it? No. no. Yeah. One of the great things I've noticed, and I got this feedback from the parents in the schools, is that even after the round, no matter how kid, these kids are, we've tried to create a space where they're respectful and even appreciative of their opponents and everyone, and they value what they're doing. And it's, it's special to see that. It's really a, a unique and beautiful thing to watch these kids really enjoying the spirit of the competition and growth. That's good. So my observation is you are a real asset. You are significantly, you with Kristen Gracia mm -hmm. and Sharon Byrne from Ensenal and the, the other principal. Linda Creighton of Laurel, yes. And the three teamed up with you are really providing a great service to the youngsters and, and the parents uh, of these youngsters and the community. It's truly a wonderful uh, thing you're doing. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to, to be able to try and make a difference. And I just want to ask, we don't have much time. No, we really don't have enough time for me to ask the other question, but I'd like to say, Sophia, thank you. You were wonderful. Thanks. Sophia, uh, Isabella, <laughs> you were also wonderful. And Coach Briar Buckholter, you were also wonderful. Thank you and so much. If people want to reach you, what is your email address? Sure. It's Briar, B R I E R, Buckhalter, B U C H A L T E R, at yahoo.com. Or uh, they can also reach me at gmail.com. Both ones work. And they can call me at area code 408 771 2904. I'm always hopeful to reach out to any kids Great. that could use it. Girl, say, hi, Ma. Hi, <laughs> Ma. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael Killen. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, she's out of here. <laughs> what do you think of it?